Hi, I'm Sarah, and we are talking about episode four of Amazing Race today with one of my favorites. James is our special guest today, you guys. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining me. Of course, Sarah. Always a pleasure. Thanks for having me. I always get so giddy when you text me like, are you available for a recap? And I'm like, yes, of course. I'll drop everything and anything to be here with you. I love talking you about the race. You are so kind to do that. Uh, yeah, we're going to get into the episode. If you haven't watched James's recap from yesterday yet, also make sure you check that out. Uh, but first, if you're new to this channel, please click subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. Would much appreciate it. <laughs> Hello, everyone in the chat. Thank you for joining. Hey, Kathy. Hello. Um, so first question for you as we get into this episode, um, we're not seeing them travel. We're not. They just magically appear in places. How do we feel about this? You know, I think they're doing the best that they can to kind of maybe not feel like they're going back to the COVID format. I think by doing that with the paragliding was a prime example. I actually enjoyed how this episode started with the paragliding just because it was yeah. a fun, like out of race moment. And I'm sure a lot of people would have loved to have seen it more as a task. But, you know, having done the race, there's so much downtime or like fun moments that we have that never really make the edit. And I just feel like this is a prime example of just us on the race. I'm saying us, like uh, racers on the race, uh -huh. experiencing, experiencing it in all of its glory, even outside of just like running a leg. So I enjoy it. And I think they're doing the best that they can with the tools that they have. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. I mean, especially since we're not seeing them travel. This was kind of like traveling. It was like, oh, they just have to yep. glide into town to get their uh, their clues here. It was cute. It's also, you know, like we saw, it's a little bit difficult for some people, right? Heights or just it's it's a little nerve wracking and right. that could set you off a little bit could make you tense could make you emotional and i don't know that kind of factors into the race so i'm here for a little extra yeah i'm also do i do wonder if like this had been a task in the middle of the leg where the adrenaline is going and mm -hmm. stress is at an all time high would we have seen maybe a little bit more struggle from someone like Sean, who mm -hmm. the episode prior clearly couldn't make his way down a mountain, but because it's a little bit more of a relaxed start and not much at stake, there's really nothing to lose. So you do it anyway. I was just really impressed that he overcame his fear, especially right? with literally the leg before and has since gone skydiving, like such growth yeah. from Sean. We love to see it. Right. And they even said to me in their exit interview that it was so beautiful and so almost meditative that it helped them handle being eliminated. I love that. Right. I mean, who knew he that it, they could turn like a fear into such a beautiful moment that it actually helped them at the end of it all. And this is why we love the amazing race. Right. <laughs> all of that yes all right well they're gonna paraglide into medellin colombia uh danny's gonna cry of course of course cry counter we love we uh -huh. love it <laughs> uh and also besides sean being terrified we see leticia she was like still terrified like sean enjoyed it but i think she was like no get me through this. Yeah, which was, I, I wasn't expecting that because I don't mm -hmm. feel like she's really touched on having like a little bit of a fear with heights. Um, but, you know, she powered through that, wanting to really inspire her children and have her look like a superhero in their eyes. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Group one is our boyfriends and our Colorado couple. They're going to set out first. Then we have group two is our pilots, our girlfriends, law enforcement, NFL. Um, I Juan gave us like a little sound bite about the fact that he still has family in Medellin and that he might potentially run into someone. And I genuinely got nervous that he was going to run into someone. It would have been actually kind of fun. <laughs> if it actually it would have been 
fun, it's but like he can't say anything. Right? I was like, oh, they're yeah. setting this up. He's going to run into right? his aunt. But also like what an advantage if he had run into a family member and just like the information and the wealth of knowledge he would have gotten from them. I think it would have been a really fun moment. And full Would circle. he have been able to have stopped to talk? I thought you guys had to be like, no, I'm not here. I, I don't remember a rule specifically like that. I definitely Ooh. don't think you can, like, if, if let's say he had run into his aunt, it would be more so, like, she couldn't run the leg with them. There is a Ooh. rule where, like, the locals can't, because I think Rob and Amber, like, they have people literally yeah. running the legs of the race with them, <laughs> where, like, that's just, sense you, made can't a rule. you can't run the race with a local. You can't do the leg with a local. I mean, if you were to get information from your aunt, it's the mm -hmm. same thing as getting information from a local. You just happen to run in them into them organically. Yeah, exactly. I'd be like, hey, Kaz, what, can I have your cell phone, please? <laughs> Look, I know I haven't visited you in a while, but like, just give me your phone. I'll talk to you right. later. I'll pick you up after this. <laughs> Uh, that would have been amazing. Um, and then our last and final group here is going to be our mom and son, our cousins, double Dutch, and our firefighters uh, pulling up here. And so our first little task here is a detour, dance vibe or wall scribe. James, you said you would want to do wall scribe. Is that correct? Is that still accurate? Yeah. And I think this is would have been one of those things where Will would have wanted to do one and I would have wanted to do the other. I mean, if we were in the front of the pack and like first to the detour, I probably would be more flexible with Will and mm -hmm. saying, yeah, let's do it. Because I do think we would absolutely have busted this out with our experience. It would have been like probably a one attempt and done kind of thing. Whereas if it would have been like middle of the pack or back of the pack, I would be a little bit more apprehensive because now you have to wait for other teams to perform. And it's a 30 yeah. second combination. Also with performers, you don't know if they have to take a break. I mean, if you mm -hmm. remember our season with, you know, great con, um, Leona Lana and Haley and Kaylin and hung and Chi had to wait for the, 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 actors, the stunt people to reset time and time. So that's even more time. I just think it, going to the puzzle was just the quicker option. Um, and mm -hmm. I feel like something easier to bust out where you don't have to wait for all the other teams. So true. Although there should have been some waiting at the uh -huh. the wall puzzle. Mm -hmm. Like it was a little, it was um, unbalanced is the, yeah. is the word here. And um I don't like how teams literally could just stand there and if there was no team behind them, they could have just kept rapid fire answers yeah. where it almost should be like, if you gave an answer, there should have been maybe like a five minute penalty where you can't give another answer until the five minutes are up. Or maybe you have to go all yeah. the way back up the path and then come back down. There should have been a little bit more of a challenge to it than just figuring out the puzzle itself. Yeah, you at least go back to the first puzzle, walk it, come yep. back. Like, that's yep. all. It didn't have to be anything super complex. But, like, you, how often do you just get to stand there and rattle off answers? Like, we never see that. Mm -hmm. That was that was bizarre. But you wouldn't know that reading the clue. You would assume, I would read that clue and assume the puzzle is way harder, way more of a process. I would lean towards dance. I don't know if David would fight me on that, uh, probably. Um, <laughs> But I would be so terrified that I would be the firefighters. Like, mm. I'm good at puzzles, but it takes one word and you just don't realize you haven't said, you know, a different a the instead of a you instead of me kind of thing. That, I mean, and on our recap yesterday, Kayla said the same thing. She was like, I feel like if I'm looking in the mirror, I'm going to think like I mm -hmm. or we, because there's two of us looking into it, the the you part of it would have been a little bit more challenging to get to. Um, so, yeah, I hear you on that. And and if you're in that stress of the race and you've said so many things, you've rattled off all these answers, I don't know if I'd be like, okay, I said you, I said me, did I say I, did I say, you know, like, I don't know. I felt so bad for the firefighters, but also I completely was like, that would probably be me. I would just be mucking it up left and right, <laughs> even though it's so easy. You just don't know. 
You'd never know, especially because that race brain activates mm -hmm. and then all hell could break loose. Uh, so the dance is going to work out for uh, some people, although I was surprised at how many people were not comfortable with dancing, but, you right. know, a partner kind of figured it out for their other partner. Um, I liked that the dancers were behind them, yep. but the other racers are watching you. I don't know. Does that add pressure if the racers are watching you? I think it does to some extent because you know that that if you don't nail it, you have mm -hmm. to go to the back of the line and you see the other teams waiting there. So like you have to know you have to get it. Otherwise you have to wait. Um, mm -hmm. It's like same with last season. I feel like when they were in India and they had to do the movements with the the, the mm -hmm. pots on top of yeah. their head. Same thing. Everyone was just sitting there watching. And I do think it is a little bit of added pressure um, for the teams to be like, we have to nail it. Yeah. Um, the puzzle, though, is going to help a couple teams, especially Danny and Angie. Like, this is just going to be... <laughs> He this got is his gonna be their day. puzzle buffet. He ate, he was fed, he really was thriving on this leg. And that is something I feel like I've always said since the beginning with Danny mm. and Angie and just knowing Danny, I'm like, if there's a leg where there's more of like a mental component to it, that is going to be their time to shine. It's not yeah. all about brute strength. And I was so thrilled and it, I loved watching his enthusiasm <laughs> For a puzzle. He's like, this is my adrenaline. And I just thought that was so freaking cute. It's relatable. I get it. Uh, and it's also just nice to see them have a little bit of a break, right? You right. know, um, Angie is a little slower. They've had to sort of struggle through these first few legs. And here we get to see them kind of breeze through because he's able to to do the puzzle. Um, I also thought that Double Dutch was getting a break. They were killing it at dance, but it did not continue, unfortunately. Yeah, they just like, and I think that in the first leg of the race, they started off so strong. I think they got like, what, fifth place in the premiere. Mm -hmm. And I was like, this is going to be a really strong team because they work really well together. They can communicate. They're having fun. And they seem to do really well at the tasks. So, yeah, they just they just couldn't get a break. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, we got to talk about the Colorado couple a little bit here because they're going to have an emotional, uh, moment, have to sort of talk it out in the cab ride. Right. Uh, they do very well at the puzzle. Um, but she's not fast enough for him. Uh, Vinny, uh, she says, uh, I can't go as fast or something. And he was like, you need to go faster. Uh, what if, if Will spoke to you this way, uh, what, what's going to happen, James? I think, um, I mean, again, I'm speaking from my experience and my relationship yeah. with Will and nothing against them. But mm -hmm. I think I feel secure enough in my relationship to know Will is literally just looking at me and knows my potential and knows what I'm good at. That that would be his way of like, step it up. Like you, you can do this. It's just, you're in your own way kind of thing. And I think his delivery with it would obviously be a I hate to say it, a little bit more supportive mm -hmm. and I don't think I would have taken it the wrong way, but that's my relationship obviously right. in dynamic with Will. I'm not Vinny or Amber, yeah. but it was, it was hard to watch because it's like, you know, Amber clearly needs to feel support in this moment. And it wasn't until the taxi cab where I feel like they were able to kind of talk about it and kind of come to some kind of understanding, even if it took a little bit, of bickering or a little bit of friction or some tears on Amber's part, but I, it seemed like they found a way through. Yeah. I mean, they obviously know each other well and are able to talk through stuff. And it sounds like Amber does struggle maybe with some self-confidence and maybe feels insecure. Uh, but I would want my partner to be a little bit more supportive. And when we see um, a partner just kind of like, demanding without that support and then we see like a sean and michelle who are gonna have like a hundred attempts on a map and he's still like babe you got it yeah. like it's just so interesting to see the different styles with with partners yeah, and honestly running the race with a significant other is not easy like it 
it, I mean, traveling in itself, I, like I said on our season, traveling with someone you love. And if you get back and you still love them, marry them at the airport. Cause traveling <laughs> already brings out sides in people that you may yeah. not know in like your everyday life. But then to add on those stressors of the amazing race, which is already a pressure cooker in and of itself, yeah. it's going to be a lot harder on a relationship. So it's really in these moments, how are they able to overcome and push through? And like Kathy said in the chat, Kathy's saying, I love that Vinny knew she needed a moment and gave it to her without pushing. So yeah. I, I, they clearly were able to come back to some kind of mutual understanding in the taxi after Amber had the moment she needed to get over it. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that Vinny like softened up a little bit, right? Yeah. He he heard that he couldn't just demand more from her, that she kind of needed that space. So um, yeah, they were able to work through that. Uh, this next, uh, what is this? The roadblock who's feeling artsy. First off, that's tricky because you're <laughs> like, oh, art. Yes. And then you're like, wait a minute, this is not artsy at all. I, uh -huh. You have to understand maps. You have to understand directions and memorization, especially in a language that maybe isn't your first language. Yeah. This was a bit tricky, although I was a little shocked at how tricky it was. I would have loved to have done this roadblock. I love maps. I feel like yep. I'm really good with just getting my bearings, a little bit of a geography layout, put me somewhere I can figure my way out of it. And I think this is a really great example of just like who really prepared for the race in terms of map reading and understanding just the basics of geography and landmarks. Um, it was fun to watch because it did bring a lot of stress and a lot of meltdowns. And I thought that they did a really good job at making it somewhat confusing because if you weren't there early on, you were probably on the opposite side of the map board. So your bearings yeah. were behind you, not directly in front of you because like Ricky, he could see that checkered church and he knew this is my, this is my point of view. It's as it is laid out in front of me where Amber who's on the reverse side is a little disoriented. So I mm -hmm. like that they threw those curveballs in there. And I also like that they put the blinds in that mm -hmm. you could put down and pull up when you're working on it. I just, I, I like the different, I guess, layers to this roadblock. It was a fun one for me. I agree. And I would have loved it too. I love a map. I love getting into a map, like the whole Joey joke where he like steps into the map, but like, that's how I am when I travel. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, let me step into the map. And like, yes. that's how I understand where I am. And then I'm really good at direction. So I feel like I would have nailed this and figured this out but it was hard to watch the the people who were just like not getting it yeah i mean you definitely could see people's gears going and like mm -hmm. people who are able to figure it out right away or the execution of the roadblock in itself like ricky being able to just lay out the tiles and be like okay you know there's 20 pegs or whatever and then i there's 12 of these plaques that i need to put up on it like that was one way to do it. And it was so beautifully executed. But then you have Shalisa who runs up to it and she goes, where's the map? Where's the map? And like, babe, it's right in front of you. That is the map. Right this, this is the map. <laughs> it was so funny to watch. And then yeah. of course the chaos cousins and just like Karishma really getting in her own way and being so confused and not understanding Always. it. Asking that lady to move in front of the skull. It was just, just, so funny. And I just, I, I don't know. I just, I think this is really well designed. I mean, the cousins are absolute chaos and absolutely <laughs> entertaining. Like how do they exist? How it, it's wild. It's going to have to catch up with them on this race. Like they make mistakes left and right, but it's I so know. entertaining that I don't want it to, I don't want it to, you know, bite them in the butt yet. I, I know. And especially because they've been kind of pretty consistent with that back of the pack placement, you know, 10th, 10th, 8th, 9th. And I just feel like there's not much more wiggle room now that we're down to the final nine teams to like yeah. get out of that spot. So they're definitely going to need a miracle of some kind or a trip up from another team next leg to, I think, still secure a spot. I'm worried about these two, but they're bringing and they're delivering the entertainment for us. Absolutely. They're so fun to watch and they are going to have a moment here because they are, you know, 
in the back of the pack. They're struggling. Uh, Karishma is not understanding how to do this task. Shori starts to get emotional at the side because they don't know where the firefighters are. Right. Um, the firefighters struggled with the puzzle. Like we mentioned earlier, they end up switching to the dance. They go do that dance by themselves. When you see an edit like this, you're like, you have no idea how far behind, how many times yeah. they're doing it. They're just like, thrown into the edit they show up and all of a sudden the last two teams that are there are like oh my gosh we have a we have a shot here and then sunny breeze is on by she just Oops. like completely dominates it and of course she's like i really you know had a thing for landscaping or whatever she said yes. like, of course she does pulling from real life experience applying it in the race and the most like unlikely situation right and I was like so impressed with these two because I thought they were done for. Done. Especially yep. with how long the puzzle took and then switching detours, which is always risky. Very impressive. Right. This was really amazing. They had, they struggled so much. You think they're out of it. Um, so I talk about this all the time in the editing when we get the confessionals. You know, some of these confessionals, it's really dark. Uh -huh. You know, and you're like, oh, no, they're back in the back. They, they, they've they been cut, right? And so earlier in the episode, the firefighters do a confessional, and it yeah. is nighttime. I'm seeing them struggle. I'm like, oh, my God, this is it. They're done and then there's it. a confessional later with Michelle and Sean, and it is like the darkest of the middle of the night. And I was like, oh, it's, <laughs> oh, okay. This is even darker. Okay. So it's not the firefighters. <laughs> that was my clue. But this is when we're at the map. Like you said, Sunny's going to breeze through this. Michelle is going to do the opposite of breezing through this. She's struggling so much. And I'm not sure that she ever figured it out because they're caging it on their answer. It so didn't look bad. like it. It almost like it mm -hmm. got too late and they were like, can you just stand here? Look like we, you know, approved it yeah. and gave you the clue. Cause yeah. we didn't even get to see her board. No, mm -mm. Uh -uh. it looked like production stepped in and said, it's late. You got to keep moving here, which is kind of nice instead of Phil showing up. Yeah, like just, I, it could easily be like a logistical thing too. Cause yeah, in yeah. former seasons, Phil's definitely showed up and been like, you're eliminated. All the teams have checked in. But it, there's so much movement, I feel like, in things that have been pre planned for like a pandemic format season. Yeah. With the charter. So I feel like if they're going to stay on schedule, they kind of got to keep things moving rather than take Phil away and like bring him to the spot to eliminate him. So it makes sense. But yeah. I felt bad for them. Oh, I, I felt so bad for them. And they said that after the cousins left, they were there for hours or at least an hour. They said they were still there for a while before, I guess, production cut them off. Um, but uh, so we saw Danny and Angie benefit from today. We did see Sunny and Busy benefit a little bit after a bit of a stumble here. So mm -hmm. our order here is first place ricky and cesar absolutely slaying uh, they're they're making the race look easy yeah they just show up and they just do and like they just do that's it yeah uh, you know gotta gotta leave it to the gays we get shit done <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, and make it look good with Blair and entertainment. Like they're they're enjoyable to watch. They're yep. fun people. Um, they're doing really well. I can't imagine it's going to be like this every leg. But for I the mean, sake of predictability and viewership, I would yeah, I, I would be nice to see them struggle at some point, overcome some kind of hurdle, fall back in the placements just a little bit, just to make it a little you know more unpredictable. I, and that's just reality. Like you just can't nail everything. Like that's just no. not realistic. So we'll see it. Um, they get to win $2,500 each. Amber and Vinny are going to come in second place. Now controversial. They started to race for first place and stopped. But they just stopped. It was such a weird shift. 
It was. And Especially Kayla, after like, Benny had been like, we're going to invest. True. And yeah, Kayla on our recap made it, she said it beautifully. Like, I was so emotionally invested in their journey because they were so hungry for first. And then for it to just stop like that, she's like, it was so off putting. It just caught me off guard. I, I mean, I don't think that I would have given up my spot for first. I think I would have gone for it, even, no matter how much I like another team. Danny's smart enough to figure it out on his own. They're probably going to get it done. I don't need to sit there and help. So, I mean, we'll never know now, but it would have been an interesting yeah. foot race and an exciting finish had they followed the boys and just duked it out for first. Right. That I think that that's the good point from Kayla is like, it was just abrupt, right? We had yeah. seen Vinny be like, we're literally racing for first. It's not like, right. you, obviously they're doing well. He wanted that first place. And for them to just literally stop once they see the, the boyfriends run off, just didn't compute and didn't make sense. Unless maybe he was like, I can't push Amber. Like, was he- that's that's kind of how I interpreted it was like, maybe there's another conversation in the taxi that we didn't see in the edit. Maybe yeah. he was learning to just kind of back off Amber a little bit. And if that's something Amber wanted to do is to help Danny and just take that moment and not feel the pressure of racing for first. And that that was going to be the best for them as a team moving forward. I'll respect that. I mean, yeah. getting first isn't everything on the race. It is as a fan. You love it. You want to hear Phil say, you're team number one and you want to bank a prize. Sure. But if they need to do what they can to preserve their unity as a team and kind of be on the same page, I'll respect it. I don't think yeah. I would have done that, but clearly they are on the same page at this point. Cause he didn't push her. Yeah, no, I would definitely appreciate that. If it was a relationship thing of like, first isn't worth me losing my girlfriend over this, then great. But right. if I was waiting for directions and I saw Ricky and Cesar, speaking the language and getting directions i'm following them so oh, fast 100 percent. why not i yes yes follow the other team and just see just see if you can yeah. make it to don't first wait place. for your directions anymore no turn around follow them and outrun them at the last second if you can and if you can't yeah. you both step on the mat at the same time and we get this like amazing finish you know agree agree it was lovely that they helped Danny, but like you said, like Danny was going to figure it out. They had plenty of time. They were early in the pack at this point, you know, but because he got their help, they are going to come in third here. I know. And I'm loving this for Danny. I mean, yeah, I think the help from Amber Vinny was really great. And like just showing this dynamic between teams that sometimes can be on the show. Sometimes it's not shown on the show, but to get the idea of like where relationships stand among the racers, I think is really interesting. And Danny being such a super fan and like loving all these shows, like I, he's living his super fan dream. It's just so fun to watch him. And I, yeah, I probably sound like a broken record at this point being Danny's number one cheerleader, but I'm loving it for him. Yes. I mean, I think, you know, those of us who do podcasts and watch podcasts are usually super fans. So, you know, we, we love to see it, right? We love to see it. Rod and Leticia are going to come in fourth. This is actually dropping back for them, but I mean, no shade to a fourth place finish. My goodness. They, and they had a little friction. I mean, especially at that detour where she didn't feel like she had a say in the detour. Mm -hmm. And she even said, this is like a marriage mistake or something where like <laughs> yes. Rod kind of took lead and there wasn't much of a conversation. And then even seeing the preview for next week, they seem to be butting heads when it comes to navigation. So I wonder if they're kind of getting to this friction boiling point. Now it's how are they going to bounce back from it? But I do think they're capable. They seem to have a really strong foundation with their love and their marriage and respect for each other. So I think they'll bounce back from it. But only time will tell. Yeah. I mean, even when they were walking up on the map or running up on the mat, she was like, I told us to go this way. Like she was definitely not feeling heard during yep. this leg. So, I mean, but that's, I mean, that's every relationship on a, a regular day, <laughs> much less like running the race. It's true. So fifth place is going to be our pilots one and Shane. I mean, they're a solid team. And yeah. I wonder if this budding relationship between these two teams because I think they've been pretty neck and neck on every leg it's almost like they're always bunched up at tasks together 
And they clearly have some kind of relationship going with like Rod and was it Shane teaming up at that roadblock? Oh, right. Yes. I I will be curious to see if it turns into something long term. Yeah, Um, that is interesting because they're so super competitive. So I think – I think they were able to see how it would help them stay at the yeah. front of the pack, but they are not going to keep that forever because because they're so competitive, right? Yeah, yeah. I feel like you, yeah, that would hit a wall at some point. But yes, uh, strong teams working together, which is going to make it harder for these more like middle to backpack teams. Uh, let's see. Sixth place is Derek and Shalisa. This this is actually dropping back for them as well, but um, not horrible. They said they want to be steady Eddies, but they were yes. steady the first three legs. Now, can they come back from six and get back yeah. to the top three? Steady I love a little two. higher, please. I yeah. do too. <laughs> steady up in the top five, please. Um, seventh place is Yvonne and Melissa. And yeah, they're the team getting the least airtime, I think. I mean, it's Sunny really and Busy rough. are not getting airtime either. Yeah, it's rough though, because the show how it's always been edited is if you're not first to a task, if you're not leading the pack, then you're not really shown. And if you're not Mm -hmm. in the back of the pack or showing struggle or showing like you could potentially go home, those middle tier teams don't get a lot of screen time, but like last week they were completely invisible. So I did appreciate the little, we did see with these two. Cause I think Yvonne and Melissa, they're they're running the race. It doesn't seem like they yep. really have issues. Um, but I think as teams start to dwindle, hopefully we'll start to see more of them and their strengths and what they bring as a team to the race. Yeah, I thought they were so cute, especially uh, I believe it was Yvonne was like a horrible dancer and they like made fun of her for it and but like had great self-awareness about it, which is very entertaining. So I would like to have more from them and I would like to have more from our eighth place team here, Sunny and Busy, I was so excited about them pre-race and they are not achieving what I was hoping they would. And they even say that. In I was going to say episode. they own that. <laughs> yeah. 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 But you know, it's, it's, it was nice last episode, which is getting that moment with Sunny and her grandmother and her talking mm-hmm. about just like how she felt like her grandma was with her all legs. So there's a really nice narrative last episode with these two, yeah. but I'm hoping, like you said, with them pointing out, like, we're not really at the level we want to be in this race is maybe like a, a foreshadow of them maybe getting it together and starting to be a strong team. Oh, I hope so. I hope so. I was glad to hear that they said that because I can only imagine like they're used to being, you know, tough ass women and yep. to like struggle in the race is probably like, what? what is happening here? Ninth place, Chaos Cousins, Kishori and Karishma. <laughs> I mean, they've got to be careful. I don't know if if they're long for this race. They're the ones I think I'm most worried about because I feel like they kind of get in their own way at times when the stress is really stressing. They just, it's like all hell breaks loose in front of them and they don't know how to kind of bring it back in and focus. Um, And even last episode, they said, you know, we, we've been kind of all over the place and we're, we're going to try to calm down and be a little bit more collected. And that, Kind of went away side, I think this led. <laughs> yes. They can only remember to do that like when it's not stressful. And guess what? It's like always <laughs> stressful. So um yeah, love them, but very concerned about them. And then obviously our last place finish here is Michelle and Sean eliminated in what looks like the middle of the night. Um, mm. but they had one of the best endings of an episode, I don't know, ever that I can remember. Like who gets Phil double dutch double jumping dutch. rope? I mean, what was this? This was amazing. It was a great finish, especially when the rope yeah. hits the camera and it kind of he breaks the fourth wall. Like it was just, yeah, it was a great send off for these two. I felt like it was very fitting, and they obviously left with their heads held high. Um, it would have been fun to see them last longer because I think that yeah. they they could have done some serious damage on the race, but they just yeah could not catch a break. No, they really couldn't. I was really hoping that the dance 
uh, task was a break for them, but it did not last long. But like we said at the beginning, we saw Sean conquer some fears. Uh, and even Michelle said she conquered a fear of dogs. She yeah. said because they were everywhere they went and she was able to work through that. So good for them. And they got to look like awesome parents, which was important to them for their family. Right. Uh, and yeah, it loved the jump roping. So sad to see them go, but yeah, they, they seem to struggle a bit on those race. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, so coming up next, we got some self driving y'all. Can't wait. <laughs> Oh my gosh, we're going to see chaos with that. We're going to see fights over that. Um, that's the most fun part about uh, this sort of COVID adjacent. Because it looks like they're driving stick. Yeah. And so I can't wait to see what team we can pass the torch to. Yes. <laughs> I love it. Um, yeah, so I guess... Let's see here. Loving Rick, Ricky and Cesar, but is anyone going to be able to beat them? <sighs> yes, there's plenty of good teams, James. Come on. I would like to say, yeah. I really, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I as a viewer would like to see it. I, I really would like to see a little bit more fluctuation yeah. in the placements because it's kind of like, you know, season 20 with Dave and Rachel. Like they, dominated and it was just very predictable that they were constantly at the top constantly getting first place no matter how dysfunctional these two were and they still pulled it out <laughs> same with justin and diana on 27 they were constantly placing first yeah. and it gets predictable and it can get a little kind of until the end yeah and it just i would like to see it as a viewer not to see them continue to do so well, but I can't fault them for doing so well because they did no. their homework. They work their asses off. So yeah, I would like to see it, but I wouldn't be surprised if they continue to dominate. Well, no, I mean, I think they're going to stay in the top. I think we'll see them at the finale, but uh, Amber and Vinny are pretty strong. Yeah. Um, I mean, going Ron from 12th to 7th to two back-to-back -back second places. I mean, Amber and Vinny can definitely give them a run for their money. Yeah, and I think Juan and Shane yes. could get a chance up there in the top three. Um, depending on the day, Derek and Shalisa could. Rod and Leticia could. I mean, I think we've got some really good, like, top five teams. Yeah. Um, so I have to imagine it'll bounce around a little bit here. I, I can't imagine they, they stay first the whole season. We'll see. Oh boy, yeah, we'll see. Be breaking records. <laughs> I mean, hey, if they can do it, all power show them. That's amazing if they can oh, do that. for sure. Um, and I would say, let's see, Kajori and Karishma, I'm very worried about, but gosh, I'm honestly worried about Sunny and Busy too. Yeah, I, it, it's interchangeable for me with those two yeah. teams as to who could go home next. If either of them mm -hmm. do, I don't know if I would say I'm surprised. Because again, yeah. there's no, as teams start to leave, there's not much more room for error. And I just feel right. like these two are kind of follow falling to for that last spot. They're fighting for that last spot. So yeah, yeah, yeah. we'll see. Okay. Uh, any other thoughts that you want to share about this episode or these teams? I mean, we know you love Angie and Danny. Can they can they stay at the top three? I think they're fully capable. I I think if there's more balance with the physical, mental type tasks, they know where their strengths lie and where that they where they'll excel. They clearly work well together as a team. Yeah. So I would love to see them continue to succeed to succeed. And I think obviously having that relationship with another team could potentially help Kathy to answer your question. I don't, I did not want spoilers for this season because Danny's on it and I want to be surprised. Mm, interesting. Yeah. Mm. Usually well, I kind of have an idea, but with this one, I didn't want to know. The fact that James did not join our draft this season gave us a chance to actually <laughs> win. But for some reason, David like channeled you or something because he has already basically won. Like we have no shot. It's no, so who's on his David. team again? 
David has Ricky and Cesar. Ricky and Cesar, Rod and Leticia, Juan and Shane, Yvonne and Melissa. And he already has 39 points. Yeah, that's wild. <laughs> I have nine points. Okay. Like Greg has 12, but he's down uh. to two teams he only has danny and angie and amber and benny but i mean they're placing so oh yeah dave david's probably yeah like this draft lasted uh like two legs and we were like oh okay. <laughs> well nope. hopefully this shakes up a little bit sarah um yes hopefully it does i mean gosh like like somebody on my draft team to give me some points here. That's why we race for first place, guys, so that we can have draft points. That's fair. That's okay, very you know, fair. Like, why are they not thinking about us? Ha <laughs> ha, just kidding. <laughs> um, all right, you guys. Uh, James, thank you for joining. I always love always. chatting with you. Yes, always a pleasure, Sarah. Thanks for having me. Is there anything you need to promote? Want to tell the peoples? No, I just, um, for those of you who don't know, I'm not recapping the season with Will. He has to work a lot more this season. So I am doing it with Kayla, my bestie from the Challenge USA. And we're having a lot of fun recapping together. And we had Leo and Alana and Laura and Michelle and Sean on the other day celebrating Leo's birthday. It was, it was a really fun recap. So if you haven't had a chance to check it out, feel free to do so. It was. It's always. I love seeing Leo and Alana. So so They're happy so to fun. see them, especially yes. with it being his birthday. I was like, he is slap happy. He's enjoying that cider. <laughs> he was unfiltered. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> mm -hmm. And they're they've got another baby on the way. They're I know. adorable. I know. We love them. So happy for those two. Uh, yes, thank you, Kathy, for um, oh, posting that. You. If you not subscribed over there obviously go do that and if you haven't watched uh my interview with michelle and sean please go check that out they were so fun to talk to i can absolutely see how they were cast so energetic it was like a bolt of caffeine talking to them they were so energetic they were uh, loved it and thank you to everyone who joined us in the chat today really appreciate it if you're watching later please leave a comment let us know you know who you're rooting for who you're worried about can anyone knock ricky and say sorry off of that first place let us know all of your thoughts we'll see you next time guys thank you bye everyone